I want to start this talk about this new Apple white paper with a riddle. And this really isn't a riddle. It's actually a problem that you need to reason through. So I'm going to start by saying kindergarten kids generally get this correct. So this would be four, five, six year olds, right? But those of us with higher education typically fail at this or have a very hard time. If you've seen this one before, you're going to know the answer immediately. The reason I want to call this out before I get into explaining like what the answer to this is, is LLMs follow a very similar path. They are pattern matched a certain way. They are built on a enormous corpus of data and they really are pattern matching to get to a solution. And reasoning in my perspective is just turning a dial to give it a little bit more compute to try to to try to pattern match longer. Now, there are people that will argue that it's not pattern matching, and I just think that's bogus. If you think about us as humans, we pattern match from the age of four, three, two, like we were pattern matching from literally the time that we are born. We recognize people by their face. We recognize emotions by the way they move their eyes and their mouth. Babies, you can make scary faces to them. They understand that emotion because we pattern match and we learn these innate abilities over time. We also look at clouds and we see patterns in clouds. We as humans pattern match. I know people do not like that, but yes, we can take those patterns and combine them in unique, very cool ways to come up with these very clever, like cool solutions, inventing new products. We can solve new problems. We can do things that were not possible because we built the right sequence of patterns that come together to make that happen. And you may fundamentally disagree with me on this point, but literally if you see this just on a daily basis, look at the clouds and you can immediately see, oh, that looks like a truck. Oh, that looks like a duck. You know, you can see patterns everywhere you look. So in this example, if you think about the patterns that kids are going to look at, they're going to look at shapes. They're going to look at lines. They're not going to totally understand the mathematical equations that we run through. So in my head, when I first saw this problem, I was like, okay, so then we've got one times two minus three, one plus two minus three, that equals zero. So now I, okay, then I go, so if that three times, so if we do that same equation, three times zero minus four, nine, oh, that's not right. So you start going through all these equations. But what a kid's going to do is they're going to go, that's a circle. So there's no circles in the first one. In the second one, there's, there's one circle. In the third one, there's one circle. In the fourth one, there's three circles, two in the eight and one in the nine and so on. LO limbs are pattern matching from the knowledge that they've been given. And everything that we want to talk about in this paper is I want to keep that context in mind because that's how I'm fundamentally going after this problem. Now, one thing I would say is that there are three major claims in this white paper. One is current large reasoning models, LRMs, do not possess generalizable reasoning. And I want to come back to what that means in just a second because just because I got that question above wrong the first time I saw it does not mean that I wasn't reasoning to some degree. So what is reasoning? The second claim is that benchmarks are a poor performance indicator. I totally believe this. Like I think you need to test it in your own scenarios to understand what works and what doesn't work. And the third thing is fundamental scaling limitation of current architectures. We can see that already. And I actually maybe stepping back a little bit. Do you guys remember the day, if you're old enough, when we hit one gigahertz on the CPU? And then it was shot up to like three gigahertz. You know, today we're still not that much higher than three gigahertz when that came out a very long time ago. I want to say I had, I remember a three gigahertz processor in like 2010. I could have that year wrong, but there was a Q6600 that had came out that I was really excited about. It was a, and it had hit three gigahertz and it was an affordable processor. My processor I have now is not that much faster than that, but it has scaled in other ways. So I think the one thing that we have to keep in mind is there are other ways we can scale rather than purely in the current architecture. So reasoning is one way. I also think agent tool calls and function calls is a way that hasn't been explored to its fullest yet. 
for example, Claude 4, I can give it a bunch of data. It can write code for itself in the context of that same chat, run it, get its information back to itself. So I just want to keep all of that in mind. But first, let's go over to like what reasoning actually is. And what I want to do is say, so what is reasoning? It's the action of thinking about something in a logical, sensible way. Nowhere does it say that you have to be correct. Now, I'm not saying AI is or isn't reasoning. In my opinion, reasoning to me is taking all the knowledge that we have, pattern matching in the same similar way in my head, and figuring out how that applies to the current problem. I believe that is the fundamental principle that LLMs use. So people that are saying, oh, it's just pattern matching, well, duh. It is just pattern matching because that's what we as humans do. That's what LLMs are doing. So right, let's go a little bit deeper here. If you take a look at this chessboard, now my chess ranking sits around 1,000 to 1,200, depending on the, how much I actually play. I am not an incredibly good chess player. So some of the mistakes that I make is I'll go through all of this and I'll find like a, a move that's like, okay, that's, that move looks good, but it's actually bad a couple of moves from now. But then I'll go through the entire loop of looking at all the pieces and I come back to that one, have forgot that I landed there and then make that move and then immediately blunder a piece or something happens. And I'm like, dang it, I knew that was a problem. LLMs struggle with the same type of thing. In fact, one of the earlier tests that I did here was I built this AI board, was this chess board where I had AI player one and AI player two and I had to play against each other. I worked hard on constraining them to follow the rules, et cetera, et cetera. They were not good at it. Why? Because the problem space was so deep. Think about the number of permutations you can run here. I can run this piece here, here, here. I can run this piece here. I can run this piece here, 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 here. It's so deep of a problem space. The pattern matching that you need to do here. In fact, the number of players that are like ELO, ELO like 2600 or higher is 0.01%. Now, the only correlation that I have for something that I've actually been really good at is StarCraft 2. In StarCraft 2, at one point, I was in the top 2% of players in the world and actually almost cracked the top 1%. I could understand how to react to people. I was fast. I was able to actually play the game in a way that actually, like I felt like I was intuitively in control. But every once in a while, I'd run into a scenario that I hadn't been in before and I would crumble. Why? Because I hadn't built the pattern matching. Because I can reason, but reasoning takes time. But in StarCraft 2, you have to be incredibly fast. Now, if you're playing a game of Blitz chess, for example, or like super fast chess where you get like very little time to actually play, you also are really reliant on pattern matching. You're not given time to go through all the permutation of playing this long game of chess. So I just want to kind of go into like this entire thing with my core principle is you can reason without being right and that's okay. And that reasoning is a series of pattern matching and understanding kind of how things play out. So if you do not have a high pattern matching ability with chess, you're going to do terrible in the fast speed games of chess. If you do not have a high level of pattern matching in StarCraft 2, you're going to do terrible at when something happens in there. No matter how fast you are, you'd be the fastest player in the world, but if you can't pattern match and understand that these scenarios, I should do this, or this scenario, maybe at this point, because of this scenario, I see them over here, I need to do this particular thing. You just end up in this really dynamic, like back and forth. And I think LLMs are no different. For example, one of the most clear things is at low complexity, non-thinking models are more accurate and token efficient. Yes, we see that on a daily basis. If you code it all with LLM, do you know this? But there are times you need to ultra think. You need to put more meat into it. Turn the dial to comp uh, crank up compute. And there are points where LLMs just can't solve the thing because you're working in this domain or this problem that isn't easily pattern matched. In fact, I ran into a problem recently where I literally had to dive in for about eight hours. It was so in the weeds. AI was not helpful at all. It took me eight hours to kind of unravel what exactly in this one particular interesting case to actually figure out what it was. And that stuff happens. And the reason that I have that ability is I have 
problem so i've been debugging and problem solving in code for 26 27 years now for a very long time and i remember like one of the very first projects i worked on like you just live in the debugger you you build this kind of in, innate muscle on it and llms don't have that same level of experience they instead have this corpus of knowledge from all the code around the world built into them which is beyond what i can do so they they understand one dimension more than me. I understand debugging and digging in deeper and trying to work through problems better than them. But that's okay. LLMs, I think, will get better at that over time. But it, it is just one of those things that, like, it is pattern matching. I'm able to kind of dig in and understand, okay, in this particular case, I've seen these types of things. Or have you ever ran into, like, a memory or race condition? That is incredibly hard if you've never hit those cases before to understand what's going on. What about memory thrashing? Have any of you dealt with memory thrashing? That is also another very tricky problem to dig into, especially if you're doing it across threads. So if you've got a thread memory thrashing another thread, you're not going to know what to look for unless you've been through it. So it's just, again, it's very interesting to me that this paper even exists because it's so... It's so much what we should already know about AI. I don't think this changes anything for me. I don't wake up today and like, because of this paper, I need to change all of my evals. Or because of this paper, AGI is canceled. No, it actually kind of reinforces to me the fact that we do have, we do have limitations. I've seen this firsthand. But also, what is reasoning? Here... They seem to claim and correlate reasoning with correctness, but you can't say that generalizable reasoning needs to be correct. Does that make sense? Like you can, I can generalizably reason through how to put something in my car, like a new alternator and get it wrong or hook something up wrong. That is just part of being a human. It actually kind of makes me think that AI is actually closer to the way humans think than, than maybe I actually was giving them credit for. So the second claim is that benchmark performance is a poor indicator of true capabilities. And I think we all know that's true. Let's take a look at Live Code Bench here. None of you can tell me that 04 Mini High is the best coding model. And this is just mind blowing to me that code generation uh, leaderboard on Live Code Bench. 04 Mini High, 03 High, 04 Mini, Deep Seek R1, 0528. Where's Claude? Those of you that are coding on a day to day basis know Claude is the best coding model. It's not even close. We've got Claude down here at number 14. So, what does this tell us here? Is that these benchmarks aren't indicative of what our use cases are. Whatever tests they're giving it, O4, the, the open AI models are really good at it. Apparently DeepSeek R1 is really good at it. And one of the worst models I think that actually came out for a while is the 0506 version, which was super nerfed in my opinion, is number five on here. So put this into perspective, like benchmark performance is a poor indicator of true capability. Yeah, no duh. Like I think we all know this. We didn't, need, we didn't necessarily need the white paper to tell us that. And in fact, I would go as far as to say, I feel like Apple is kind of struggling here because I feel like they're so far behind in the AI space. They probably have internal AI models that they've built that aren't performing very well. And they probably aren't that useful. I have to believe they're investing pretty heavily into this. So they, they probably feel like they need to do a little bit of like damage control to make sure people aren't... Uh, kind of like saying like, oh, this is going to change everything because if you look at it through the lens of Apple, they've got nothing in this space. They literally are the laggards in this entire space. And then we also know fundamental scaling limitations to current architectures is true. This goes both from a compute side and from an architecture side. There are always limitations, but there are always other angles that you can actually scale on. Take, for example, the speed of a processor. Do you guys remember when we hit one gigahertz or three gigahertz? Three gigahertz was mind blowing to me. That was unbelievable. But what has happened since then? We've gotten smaller nanometer processing. We've got more power efficient. We've gone further out with the number of cores. 
We've introduced very interesting capabilities with better cache, like faster read and writes from the L1 and L2 caches. We've scaled in other ways rather than just pure CPU speed. I don't think that's much different than what's going to happen in the LLM space, both on a hardware side, but also on the software side. Now, on a hardware side, we see NVIDIA making massive improvements to interoperability. So being able to get these large compute clusters to talk to one another, that's a huge, huge thing to actually increase um, the overall performance. But let's talk about the software side a little bit. We've got the angle of what about agentic or function calls? How many AI tools are actually doing this more and more now? Pretty much all of them. We've got Opus on Claude. I can upload a huge, I uploaded a massive CSV file. It wrote code to process it for me, fed it into its context, summarized it pretty dang good. Why? It didn't need to go through that itself. It wrote code to do it. So I would say on that front, like agents, like function calls, things like that, like things that actually AI can actually go use to give itself more information, that's where we're going to see a lot of scaling in the future. Now, back to the first claim. I cannot buy this completely because I think I already knew there was limits to reasoning. And I think about reasoning as a dial to, to kind of turn up pattern matching. But I come back to what is reasoning? In my opinion, it's pattern matching. And it just so happens we can dial up the amount of time it spends trying to match patterns, but there are times that it just can't. The, the problem space is too complex. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of on the fence on do LRMs possess generalizable reasoning. I actually think they probably do. And I don't think it's anything more than just immense algorithmic pattern matching, though. I don't think it's anything like anything insane or anything crazy. I think it's just a matter of, can you actually take a problem and do they have enough context and information about it to be able to make a good estimation about what needs to be done there? Now, humans on one hand can be given brand new problems and you're like, oh, they can do that without any prior knowledge, but so can LLMs because there is a level of pattern matching that can occur that we as humans can also do. Humans should just be better at that. And hopefully for the foreseeable future, that's where we remain better at it. But also how many people can actually solve that Tower of Handaway problem? I don't know. I would, I would argue it's probably a very small percentage of people that can handle that 10 part or 10 piece Tower of Handaway problem where an AI can simply just go off and write code to do it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. What do you guys think about this? Do you guys think that Apple's just kind of coping here, trying to put out this white paper? I see people in X kind of blowing up about this, which kind of blows my mind a little bit. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Until next time, peace out.